I wanted to try something a little bit different tonight. I don't think I've shared this on stream before, but um, <laughs> this past winter, um, Gavin and I discovered there's this tabletop version of a choose your own adventure game. I was just, I had so much fun, I couldn't let it go. So for Christmas, I asked for every choose your own adventure book, sorry, um, that exists. There are a hundred of them. They sell them in a full set on Amazon, so Gavin got them for me. I picked two choose your own adventure books for tonight, and I figured we would choose our own adventure. Are we all ready? Everybody settled in, get your jammies, get your tea. Here we go. Uh, punishment Earth. You and your best friend Og are in the way far back, a patch of wilderness on the planet Orca. The environment on Orca is just like Earth's, but the Orcan civilization is much more advanced. You and Og are feeling bored. So despite warnings from the planet's elders, you decide to explore the way far back. Now you and Og are hiking in the direction of the Lost Region, a forbidden zone full of danger. You see four black walls rising out of a clearing in the jungle. What are they? You and Og agree to hike in the direction of the black walls and explore the area. 45 minutes later, you find yourself standing in the clearing, staring at the very walls you'd seen from the treetop. Up close, the black walls are even more mysterious and forbidding. From here, yeah, forbidding. I thought, I thought maybe it was gonna be foreboding. It wasn't. From here, you and Og can clearly read the sign warning, trespassers, peek out. Still, you are curious and you've come a long way. You feel you must find what's hidden behind the black walls. As you approach the nearest wall, you hear a rustling in the bushes. You turn quickly. Out of the bushes come three giant warthogs. They also have warthogs? You try to run back into the jungle, but your escape route is blocked by even more giant warthogs heading in your direction. You turn again and run back toward the black walls, looking for some way to escape. Eventually, there will be a choice. <laughs> Og spots an old door with a large rusty lock. The giant warthogs are nearly upon you. They're so close, you can see every hairy wart on their skin. Ew. <laughs> You pick up a rock and bash the lock, breaking it off. Not a very good lock. You yank open the door and pull it shut just in time to avoid being carved up by one of the warthog's razor-like tusks. After catching your breath, you walk through a short, rock-strewn tunnel that opens into a sunlit courtyard. At first, the courtyard looks like an ordinary junkyard. As you focus, though, you see that the courtyard is filled with old space warships. They're scattered everywhere, here and there, as if they were nothing important. You discover an old monolith overgrown with vegetation. You and Og clear it off and read the inscription, Fort Triumph. Thrilled with your discovery of the fort and its artifacts, you decide to camp out in the fort overnight and explore it in the morning. How's everyone doing? Good. The next morning, you and Og are awakened at dawn by a strange humming sound coming from one of the spaceships. The two of you approach the ship and cautiously step inside. In the cabin of the ship, the humming is even louder. Og gives the throttle a light yank and the spaceship quivers slightly. Can we not, Og? Can we not? The elders must have forgotten to deactivate it, you say, as the humming grows louder. Do you think it can fly, says Og? Funny, you've been wondering the exact same thing, and whether you should try to start the spaceship. After all, if you can't fly out of Fort Triumphant, you may have to face the giant warthogs again. On the other hand, if the old ship does fly, it could break down in flight and come crashing back to Orca. Should you start the spaceship to fly out or try to leave Fort Triumphant the way you came in? I know what you guys are going to choose, I'm sure. Our ship is in a very commanding lead. After you and Og are secured in your seats, you pull back the throttle of the spaceship. The ship begins to rumble. Somehow, it manages to lift off. Pull the throttle back further. Let's zoom out of here, Og yells. Don't be a poor influence, Og, okay? Don't, you, don't be a fucking dick. <clears throat> the ship starts to gain altitude. You hover over the fort and slowly begin to fly in the direction of the way far back and civilization. Hey, this runs pretty smoothly for an old bucket of rust, you say, as the spaceship glides over the trees toward the coast. Way to fucking jinx it, us. You push the throttle forward with, and the spaceship levels out and picks up speed. Within seconds, you've passed Mach 1. You and Og howl with laughter. <laughs> Suddenly, the ship starts to vibrate badly. The throttle barely responds when you pull on it. You lose altitude rapidly. Ahead, you see the coastline and the sea. You and Og both yank on the throttle and desperately try to guide the spaceship back to land. We're not gonna make it, screams Og. Well, maybe you shouldn't have been fucking around with it. The ship skims the sea and comes to a stop right on top of the water. 
It's still in one piece, and so are you. But the ship is sinking rapidly. You and Og quickly escape and swim to shore. The Ocean Coast Guard Beach Patrol is there waiting for you. We think you'd better come with us to see the Elders, says the captain of the Beach Patrol. You and Og know that the Elders of the Supreme Orkin Senate will find out that you were trespassing in the Forbidden Zone. This could be real trouble. You console yourself by remembering that even the Elders may have been, must have been young once. Is there any possibility they'll remember what it's like to have a chance for adventure? Should you try to make a run for it or go with the Beach Patrol? to see the elders. Punch patrol in the stomach and then run. I bet we can outrun Og. <laughs> Every man for himself. Running for it. Okay, here we go. We're making a run for it, y'all. Keep a finger on the other page. As you near the vehicle, you turn to the captain behind you. Excuse me, captain, you say. Is that a two-headed sand crab I see laying eggs in the front seat of your LSAV? You know that two-headed sand crabs are rare on Orca and that your question will make the man curious. Sure enough, the captain and his men move right past you for a look. When they do, you and Og take off running. There's a sand dune just beyond a curve on the beach, and you make it there without being seen. Moments later, the beach patrol races past your hiding place looking for you, trying not to laugh too loudly. Is this a laughing situation? We are fucking idiots. We are a teenage boy in this book, for sure. <sighs> you barely have time to appreciate your luck when you realize that you're being sucked into the sand. Your hiding place is a sand crab trap. Fucking karma. At the bottom of the trap, you imagine hundreds of many headed sand crabs snapping at you with their claws. You and Og yell for help and fight furiously to keep from falling deeper into the pit. Fortunately, the beach patrol is near enough to hear your screams. They rescue you just in time. You and Og stand in the doorway to the chamber of the elders. The entire Supreme Orkin Senate sits very still behind a huge table made of volcanic glass. Enter, she commands. Oh, how forward thinking they have a lady leader. What? I love it. As you have seen, curiosity can put you in real danger. Only if you agree to give up your curiosity and behave as normal Orkins behave, will you be free to resume your lives, resume your lives in Orkin society. If you agree to give up your curiosity, you won't be able to visit the way far back again. That seems like a lot to give up for one mistake. Agree to give up your curiosity or refuse to give up your curiosity. Vote now. We are solidly refusing to give up. I don't think we're going to need the full 30 seconds. The leader of the Supreme Senate turns to you and speaks in a faint whisper. Tell us, why are you so curious? Aren't all young people, you ask? Has anyone led you astray? No, no one. Have you been in touch with other beings? You mean from other planets? No. Have you gone exploring in the way far back? Yes, with my friends. We like the way far back. And did you go beyond into the lost region? Well, it's a simple yes or no. Did you or did you not enter the lost region? You glance at Og and then at the elders. Did you or did you not enter the lost region? Yes or no? <laughs> it's a dead tie. Uh, we will refresh this. Okay, by one vote, we will say that we did in fact enter the lost region. Yes, I was in Fort Triumphant, venerable one, you tell the Supreme Senate leader. All the elders in the chamber gasp. <gasps> the leader shakes her head, then she continues. Were you alone, she asks. You don't want to lie, but you don't want to involve Og in whatever punishment is in store for you. I'm waiting for your answer, she says. Protect Og and say, yes, you were alone, or admit that Og was with you. All right, we are going to admit that Og was with us. Uh, page 54. Og comes forward and takes your hand in a symbol of friendship. Oh, we hold hands. We didn't plan this, you tell the elders. It simply happened. Curiosity isn't so bad. When you're curious, you wonder. When you wonder, you explore. When you explore, you discover. We're stronger for the experience. Okay. The elders smile at you and Og with benign expressions on their faces. Your hearts are in the right place. Your bodies are not. Orca is an old and civilized society. We prefer to remain tranquil. We keep our young population to a minimum because young people are always so curious. 
Too much curiosity overexcites us and we must guard against this. Yet we understand your feelings. All of us were young once. For the good of us all, for the tranquility of our beloved Orca, you must travel to Earth. There you can satisfy this curiosity of yours. Stay there until your curiosity is satisfied. You might even do the Earthlings some good. In a flash, it seems, you and Og are on an interplanetary spacecraft headed for Earth. It'll be okay, Og. You'll see. We'll blend right in. Oh, sure. We'll blend right in. You see Og pull a pair of Terra shades from the pocket of the spacesuit. Space what are you doing with those, you guess? You know you weren't supposed to take anything like that with you. Those are the most advanced wearable computer monitors we organs have. Oh, yes, Google Glass. Og puts on the Terra shades and goes back, goes to look for Earthwear. You have to admit, the Terra shades look cool. You choose a shirt that says, you went to Astro World and all I got was this t-shirt. What? Astro World is like where I grew up. What? That's so cool. Sorry. It doesn't even exist anymore, but I spent so much time as a kid at Astro World. Og reminds you that you need to pick a landing site on Earth. You are amazed at the number of different places you have to choose from. Where are we dropping, boys? China or the USA? We are landing in the USA. The computer says it's a young, aggressive, and idealistic country. I feel so attacked. But I've also heard it's always in trouble. It's even more real. <clears throat> Finally, you end up over Washington, DC. Your computer briefing pointed out Washington as the center of government. You set your controls for a slow descent to Earth. With the push of a button on your computer console, you broadcast a message of friendship on all light and sound waves. The air around you is cluttered with flying machines that look like bugs. The squadrons of winged aircraft fly above you. On the ground, hundreds of people dressed in uniforms are waiting for you. Let's go, Og, you say, activating the descender beam. Everyone's here to greet us. A ray of soft purple light stretches from the ship to the ground. The crowd utters an amazed, ooh. You and Og begin your descent, but you never reach the ground. Some earthlings in uniforms point long, hollow metal objects at you. You hear popping sounds and watch as small, sharp, pointed metal projectiles zip by. You and Og smile at the strange method of greeting. Then, one of the sharp, pointed metal pieces slams into Og. He tumbles off the descender beam, but before you can react, three of the metal pieces strike you. As you crash to Earth, you hear a voice say, I'm sure my bullets got both of them. Bullets? What are bullets, you wonder with your usual curiosity? Your last question will go unanswered. The end. <laughs> oh my god. We decided to land in the US and we got shot to fuck and I just feel like... <laughs> All right, let's go to China. China it is, Og says, agreeing with your choice. Just in time, we're entering Earth's atmosphere. Og fiddles with the directional navigator. China is a very old culture, at least in Earth terms, you offer. Big deal, it's old. What's that got to do with us, Og asks. You're in scattered clouds, 26,000 feet above the ground when your ship is surrounded by Chinese fighter ships. You notice that they're old-fashioned crafts with, with wings, but they still look really powerful. A voice barks through your communicator. Identify yourselves. Repeat. Identify yourselves. Friendlies, you transmit back on the same frequency. Friends from the planet Orca in the, Hera the Heraclean system. Follow us. Do not make any hostile or unplanned moves. We wish to believe you. When you reach Earth, you find yourselves facing a group of military people armed with archaic weapons. An officer steps forward, extending his hand in what is apparently a welcome signal. You walk forward with your arm outstretched and grasp the hand of the Chinese officer. We are from the planet Orca, and we are happy to see you. Please accept this as a symbol of our friendship. You reach into your pocket, but you don't find what you're looking for. You turn to Og and whisper frantically, Where's the box? What did you do with the gift? Oh, that. Og is relieved to find the box in a, um, sorry. Og is relieved to find the box in a pocket and hands it to you. So you fucking pickpocket me. You open the box and remove the Orkin crystal. It's a little smaller than a baseball, perfect in shape and form. Take this crystal as a token of our friendship. You hand the crystal to the Chinese officer. The officer stares at the crystal and then passes it around. You hear murmurs of awe and appreciation. The officer bows slightly, speaking to his, speaks to his aides, and then addresses you. China is an ancient culture. 
We have long recognized the changing seasons, the progress from childhood to old age, the rise and fall of nations. Perhaps you visitors can help this world pass its, its great cycles in peace. We'll try, you say, wondering just what you've gotten yourself into. First, you travel past poor farming villages on unpaved roads. Then you continue on a wide paved road. Soon you approach a city that seems to be growing even as you pass by. Finally, you arrive at a place you guess must be an ancient city. Its palaces and gardens immediately create a feeling of harmony and well-being. Welcome. We're glad you came, a guide to the city tells you. Our leaders will come and talk with you. They are very interested in hearing about your planet. You must stay here as our guest for as long as you wish. Please stay in peace. You and Og exchange glances. You know you'll stay as long as necessary, but then you plan to move on. There are many more governments on Earth, and now you're curious to meet with them all. The end. So, I don't know how you get to Area 51, but there's, I just, when I was looking for the Chinese option, I saw something that said to land in New Mexico. I like the part where we all voted to betray Og. <laughs> Thank you so much for hanging out. I will see you guys next time. I'm glad you liked the uh, kind of relaxed vibe of story time. And maybe we'll do it once or twice a week. Yeah. Okay. Goodbye.